Now, a French model enthusiast has entered the record books, uh, and it's a title that he's had to fight for. Richard Pode's 7.2 metre matchstick replica of the Eiffel Tower was rejected by the Guinness Book of Records after it was determined he'd used the wrong type of match. But after he filed an appeal, the authorities reversed the decision, admitting that they were too heavy handed. Here's what Richard Plode had to say following the decision. Yes, the Guinness in the end accepted to validate and recognise my work by validating it as the tallest matchstick structure in the world. It's very good news for me. I'm satisfied with the outcome, of course. Well, Mark McKinley is from the Guinness World Records and admitted that they got this one wrong. It was a good opportunity for us to learn a little bit more about the matchstick making community. But <laughs> yeah, we, we, we got the opportunity to see that we needed to, to change our position. So just explain then what was wrong with the matches that he was using originally. So with all of our records, we've got guidelines in place. So these are rules and evidence requirements that everybody has to follow so that everybody's attempting the same record and has the same, the same challenge. Um, in the guidelines, we had stated that uh, matches must be used and they couldn't be amended in any way. So you couldn't chop off the tops um, to take away the ignitable end. Um, that was our stance. Uh, we've since learned that when it comes to matchstick modelling, it's quite common to take off the head of the matches because you don't want something ignitable in place when you're creating a, a wooden sculpture. No, uh, quite right. I said that people used to just remove the red bit, the red tip, didn't they, in order to, to do it, right? And that would have been quite sensible, but he just very sensibly actually bought ones where it had already been removed to save him time. And, and actually time is, is important, isn't it? This took him eight years, didn't it? Um, just to clarify something for me, is this the tallest matchstick structure or the tallest matchstick Eiffel Tower structure? It's the tallest matchstick sculpture. Um, of so any yes, kind? The... Of, of, of any kind, no matter what they're depicting. So, yeah, so they had created the Eiffel Tower, which, funnily enough, was what the previous record holder had created as well. Oh, right. How high was that one? Uh, not as high as this one. So I it was around. That. Yeah, I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> it was around six and a half metres. Wow. I mean, it really is amazing, isn't it? In terms, have, you, have you seen it sort of in the flesh? No, I've not had the opportunity to see it in the flesh, but just seeing the, them putting it together uh, when they were uh, measuring it and getting the final measurement for it, okay. it's absolutely incredible. You'll have to go to Paris and see it. Paris is going to be on display during the Olympics. Um, but I was hearing uh, that you get something like 40,000 applications a year when it comes to matchsticks. Is that right? Not specific to matchsticks, no. 40,000 applications in general across oh, all records. Oh, for records record. in general. OK, I thought that yeah. was incredible. I thought there's a whole community out there that's, like, really huge. Uh, but in terms of how complicated it is to, to, to verify these things, you guys didn't go in person to see this. Did, well, you personally didn't, but did people go in, in person to see it? No, so in this instance, and with the majority of our record attempts, we have people submit evidence to us. Um, right. So it comes in various forms, you know, witness statements, video footage, photographic statements. Um, in this instance, uh, in particular, there was a, a surveyor needed to actually measure it. So we got an accurate measurement of the height. Mark McKinley there from the Guinness Book of Records.